Good morning, this is Father Nico Montalbani at St. Luke's in Toronto. Today our opening hymn is number 577, God of Grace and God of Glory. Solomon. The ungodly by their words and deeds summon death. Considering him a friend, they pined away and made a covenant with him, because they are fit to belong to his company. For they reasoned unsoundly, saying to themselves, Short and sorrowful is our life, and there is no remedy when a life comes to its end, and no one has been known to return from Hades. Let us lie in wait for the righteous man, because he is inconvenient to us and opposes our actions. He reproaches us for sins against the law and accuses us of sins against our training. He professes to have knowledge of God and calls himself a child of the Lord. He became to us a reproof of our thoughts and the very sight of him is a burden to us because his manner of life is unlike that of others and his ways are strange. We are considered by him as something base and he avoids our ways. As unclean, he calls the last end of the righteous happy and boasts that God is his father. Let us see if his words are true and let us test what will happen at the end of his life. For if the righteous man is God's child, he will help him and will deliver him from the hand of his adversaries. Let us test him with insult and torture, so that we may find out how gentle he is, and make trial of his forbearance. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to what he says he will be protected. Thus they reasoned, but they were led astray, for their wickedness blinded them, and they did not know the secret purposes of God, nor hoped for the wages of holiness, nor discerned the prize for blameless souls. The word of the Lord. I think this reading is quite appropriate considering that tomorrow is election day. It's quite something when you think about it. Election day in Canada almost seems to come out of nowhere. Then there is the campaigning, and then there is the voting, and then there is the turning on the TV to see what they eventually decide in British Columbia. It's interesting because Canada is one of those countries where the election can be over for all intents and purposes before the final votes are in. Remember as a little kid, they used to block it out on the Canadian networks, and of course, the American networks on satellite had it. So people were still getting information regardless uh, whether the government and the TV stations wanted us to know or not. One of the things we have to keep in mind when it comes to elections is we vote for various political candidates of all stripes. And when we vote for these candidates, 
we're voting for these candidates for various reasons. Sometimes we like the party they're affiliated with. Sometimes we may not necessarily like the party, but we like the candidate's personality. We like the candidate's charisma. Sometimes we are choosing the least of various evils. We dislike all the parties, we dislike all the candidates, but we need someone. Regardless of whatever our reason is for choosing a candidate, there's something very appropriate for us to remember a few years later. Did the candidate actually do or try to do what they said they would? Election promises are easy to make. We hear them all the time. And yet, it seems once the election is won or lost, those promises are forgotten. Whoosh, they're gone almost as quickly as they appeared. So many of us, I think, get very hopeful during elections. We think, ah, this time it's going to be different. And we probably have said that several times over the course of our lives. And we really legitimately do hope that this time it's going to be different. And yet, time and time again, we're disappointed. We're disappointed in part because our politicians are human beings. Now, I'm sure some of you would not choose the word human being. There's probably many other terms which I could have used instead. But just bear with me on this. Our politicians are human beings, and human beings are not perfect. And human beings often know that there's an easier way to do things than the best way. They often know that there's an easier way of doing things than the recommended way. This is really what uh, today's scripture from the Wisdom of Solomon is trying to send home for us. The fact that this can often be the case. We can be confronted with the best course of action, but the best course of action often leads to disagreement, often leads to opposition, and doesn't necessarily yield, doesn't necessarily yield as much as the path of least resistance. Sometimes our elected officials choose certain courses of action because they know it's easier to do it that way, and there's more personal benefit to them. It's difficult, I think, when we look back at the people we voted for, and what I mean by that is when we look back, we think to ourselves of that time we're so optimistic, that time we were thinking this person is going to make a difference, that time when we think to ourselves, ah, everything is going to change. And I, I think a lot back to when I was a kid, and it was the time when Brian Mulroney was elected Prime Minister of Canada. Oh my gosh, I can remember, everyone was thinking, it's gonna change, it's gonna be better, what a wonderful era is coming. And the same people who said that, after two terms, couldn't get, you know, they couldn't get to the voting polls fast enough to get rid of him. It's interesting, because sometimes those politicians which give us such great hope, give us such great um, reason to celebrate, can be huge, huge letdowns. Um, it's interesting, because right now, you know, when I look at the United States, and I look at someone like Joe Biden, his popularity is far from what it was when he was elected. This is the reality of politics. And one of the things that I think is important for us to remember is politicians do have their own motivations, not necessarily for those who voted for them, not necessarily for their constituents. If we place our trust in politicians and not in God, we're going to be disappointed. We're going to be disappointed indeed, because they're human beings. They won't live up to perfection. If we put our trust in God, we don't always know what God is doing, and we don't always know how things are going to work out. It's interesting because today's scripture speaks of God's secret purposes. And so often in our lives, we head down a particular path or we're doing a particular project and we have no clue where it's going to end, no idea where it's going to go. And yet we trust God is there leading us. If we look at God in that light, we can feel assured that things will work out. If we put our trust merely in human beings who govern us, we're going to be disappointed. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not next week, but at some point 
we will feel an incredible amount of disappointment. Since the election is here, for those of you who have voted, well done. And for those of you who haven't, I urge you to go out and to cast your ballot. Even if your candidate does not win, what it shows is that you cared enough to go out and vote. If all of us cared enough to go out and vote, we would send a very strong message to our elected leaders. We'd send a very strong message to the world that we care about our country. We care about the issues which affect our country. And we want to be part of the solution to the problems. We want to be part of making this country a better place to live. This is definitely an election which many people did not want. We're still in a pandemic. It's definitely an election that does not have a lot of enthusiasm. But it's important for us to do our duty, to take part in it. It's important for us to vote. It's one of the things I think we often don't see as being all that important. We often ask ourselves, well, what difference is my vote going to make? How can it change anything? Well, if everybody who voted asked that question, the answer is obvious. Sooner or later, enough people vote a certain way and there's a certain outcome. But even if the vote doesn't go in favor of how a person wants it to, the fact that they vote against something also sends a message. It sends a message, I'm not liking this course of action, I'm not liking this direction, this is why I'm voting this way. It's important for us to do, and it's not really the most difficult thing. I hope and pray that we will be a more united country after this election than we are right now. When I look at some of the violence which is happening at political rallies, I think to myself, this is absolutely ridiculous. It's fine to disagree with someone. It's fine to dislike someone's policy, fine to dislike someone's characteristics, but it's not fine, it's not acceptable to use violence as a way for political control. I recognize that there are leaders, that there are politicians, that there are people in government we don't like. And that's always been the case, that always will be the case. But how we deal with that situation is very important. If all we do is say, well, you know, if we want to throw rocks at someone, that's okay. We're making violence acceptable, and it's not. And it sets a very, very bad precedent. It does. It's one thing to disagree. It's one thing to vote against something. It's entirely different to try to shut that voice down by using violence. This is something I think that's important for us to remember in Canada. In Canada, we do have the right to express our ideas when we disagree. And that's an important right. That right is not present everywhere in the world. If we fall into the trap of trying to silence voices we don't like through violence, we set a dangerous precedent. And it one day could come back to bite those who were the ones who began the silencing. We have to remember, politics can be messy, politics can be divisive, Politics is a part of life, but how we treat those we disagree with is even more important than the fact we may disagree with them. I don't know about you, but I'm getting really tired of some of the slurs I hear from anti-mask rallies. This is getting ridiculous. There's nothing wrong with being able to express an opinion, but being nasty, being violent about it, this is not acceptable not acceptable at all. And we really need to start calling out bad behavior more. Even if the bad behavior is from people we happen to agree with, we all are part of this nation together. We all have a stake in what happens. Yes, some of us think a certain way. Yes, others of us think other ways, but we're all part of it. We all need to live together. We all need to coexist and we all need to care. I hope and pray 
as I said before, that after this election, we are much more together than we are now. Amen. I invite you to pray the collect of the day with me, followed by the Our Father. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth, and ourselves in your image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works, and to serve you with reverence and thanksgiving through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior, Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our recessional hymn is number 584, The Church of Christ in Every Age. Amen. 